Hello everyone. Welcome back back to Bloodborne. Uh, before I uh, started the recording, I bought six extra blood vials, which is why we're now up to ten, and uh, loaded in to the Great Bridge, where once again we, we can't actually go through the door, but that's okay. Let's uh, let's see what there is to explore from here. I actually don't know the path super well from this point forward, so we're going to be exploring a little bit more blind. I know we are going to look for Father Gascoigne at some point soon, but uh, I don't know exactly how we're going to get to him. I think he, he is the next boss we face, though. Come on, crows. Oh, I can get them in one hit now. That's nice. Come on. Come on, buddy. You charge me. You charge me. Oh, that didn't stagger him. Okay. That went different than expected, but... Eh, not too bad, I suppose, in the grand scheme of things. Didn't really lose much health. What we do need to do, though, is find pathways. Oh. Nice. Those guys are almost down to one hit, too. Is this... No. That's the drop down to where I picked up that one item once. Okay. So I think getting past the werewolves might have to be how we proceed. Uh, let's see if I can draw aggro on one and not both. Just one? Or is that both? Ow. Good enough, good enough, good. Ow. I'm about to die here. Regular rando enemy. It's embarrassing. Okay, well, are the werewolves still aggroed? I hope so. Yes. Hello. One down. And how much do you drop? Oh, nope. Idiot. You can't fit through this door arbitrarily. Three blood vials, nice. Search corpse, also three blood vials. Good, okay, we're net positive. Oh, that's the drop down. Okay, they're actually not horrible in terms of how much damage they take. They are aggressive and they're probably very high damage though, so I really gotta be careful. Uh, well, while we're on the bridge, let's talk Yarnum a little bit. So, we have this crazy overbuilt city that is uh, largely based on Prague, as I understand it, but uh, people often also compare it to Edinburgh. Uh, I've been to Edinburgh, I've never been to Prague. Uh, one of the things I found really interesting, though, besides, like, this enormous, incredible, beautiful architecture that is, like, such an iconic part of the game now, uh, I feel like people don't often enough talk about how, like, there's this overwhelming number of statues in the environment, which I always think is fascinating. Um, it's sort of a headcanon thing, like, I don't think this is ever actually supported by anything in the game, but uh, an idea that I like is that, um... Because people are kind of addicted to the blood, the healing blood that the church uh, releases, I, I kind of like the idea that a ton of people work on these like huge craft and like public works projects as like a means to pay off their blood debt or whatever to the church. You know, where like people end up getting like huge, huge, huge debts to the church because they they're so in love with the blood. So they end up, like, all the architectural projects, but then also, like, the art 
project and like the production of things there's this like huge accumulation of just like stuff in the streets and i kind of like the idea that like like the church doesn't even have like a plan maybe for where all these objects go or what the objects are for but um the church is maybe like like trading labor for blood okay Thankfully, avoided their tensions. Um, and that's why they're like, in, again, in my head canon only, I kind of like the idea that there's this like huge number of statues that don't really even make any sense where they're at. Like, they're not really like, they're not placed. They don't have like, they don't have the kind of uh, framing that public statues tend to have. And it's literally just because they're, they're like, there's such an overabundance of stuff getting made all the time that um, the city is just like spilling over with with like creative output. Not out of like, I guess not out of like creative energy, but um, in, in the sense of like stuff is just getting made. Stuff that like nobody needs and nobody's asking for. Oh, so this drops back down to there. Got ten extra pebbles. That's nice, I guess. More bloodstone shards. Nothing back there. Uh, how many bloodstone shards do we have, I wonder? Just two. Okay, we need five to upgrade our weapon again, so we'll, we'll be keeping an eye out for those. I don't think we can buy them, but uh, while we're in a safe place, let's see if there's anything else I need to do. The lore reading. We do need to do Beckoning Bell, Silencing Blank, and that might be it. Beckoning Bell. Great old bell discovered in the underground labyrinth. Its ring resonates across worlds, and the first hunter used it as a special signal to call hunters from other worlds to cross the gap and cooperate. A human must use insight to ring this uncanny bell, but the benefits of cross-world cooperation are many. Silencing blank. Hunters are linked by the resonance of bells with special encoding timbers. This inaudible burst disrupts such resonance. Fire to end cooperation and prevent further cooperation. Firing this does not disrupt the resonance of a sinister bell. So the sinister bell lets you invade other people's world. Beckoning bell encourages people to come to your world. Um, and silencing is to end it. So that's for co-op and uh, the sort of like counter-op, I suppose you could say. Sword Hunter Badge. One of the badges crafted by the Healing Church. The silver sword is a symbol of a church hunter. Ludwig was the first of many Healing Church hunters to come, many of whom were clerics. As it was, clerics transformed into the most hideous beasts. Bold Hunter Bell. One of the resonating bells that cross the gaps of worlds. This bell is cracked and stained with the blood of beasts. A human must expand insight to ring this uncanny bell. The old hunters, who have long passed from the dream but cannot forget the feeling of the hunt, rely upon messengers to relay their thoughts. Ring the bell at their side, and they are certain to give a listen. For the night, the hunt, for the night of the hunt is long and unchanging. So, Sword Hunter Badge, I think, is the first direct time, if you haven't already started figuring it out, um, un undoubtedly you'd, you'd start learning it soon or start realizing it soon that um, the beasts are not just like beasts of the wild that are drawn to the blood, but instead the beasts are people who uh, have been transformed by the blood. And like, oh, more bloodstone shard. Okay, we're up to three. Um, like, the blood is itself, like, resulting in beasthood spreading um why that is will get explained later i mean i think we i guess we already had an item uh the antidote kind of indicated that there was like disease spreading kind of um but this really hammers that home and, and like directly addresses the fact that people are getting turned into the beasts um and it's maybe there is some kind of psychic or emotional dimension to it because, as was mentioned, uh, 
clerics make the most dangerous beasts. Oh, I could just climb down a ladder there. Okay. Just don't want to. I want to make sure I don't miss the items on my way down. Nor do I want to drop into an area with an enemy behind me. So I'm trying to be careful about where I drop to. So there's enemies on both sides. I don't know if this game has a drop mechanic. In, in Dark Souls, there's a thing where if you drop on top of enemies and do a strike on the way down, you get like a massive damage boost. Like it's functionally equivalent to getting a critical hit. Um, I don't know if that's the case here. Uh, not really, but it's not a bad way to like start a fight. Oh, another bloodstone shard. Okay, we're up to four. We're almost at our next upgrade. Okay, got to be careful now, everybody. I think we also have, I think it's about two thousand to level up one more time, also. So we'll we'll keep that in mind. Something I want to do soonish. Oh, he just clipped through the floor. That's unfortunate because he had an item. Um, something I would like to try to do soonish is I know that there, there's these things you can get called runes, which are like passive effects. Um, and I believe there is a rune that lets you heal when you do viscerals, uh, which would be really nice to have. Uh, was this always here and I just didn't realize it? Or is this to a different place? I think this is to a different sort of to a different place. It's not where I dropped down from to begin with. Is this a door? Oh no. Okay. May the good blood guide your way. Thank you. I'll hope it does. But yeah, the, the idea that um, there's maybe some kind of like psychic or emo speaking of good blood, I suppose, that there's like some dimension to how beasthood is traveling through blood that uh yeah clerics people who worked for the church are like becoming the most brutal and, and most dangerous of the beasts which is uh kind of an interesting thematic thing i guess i mean i'm, I'm not I'm, I'm probably gonna let stuff slip anyway like spoilers are just gonna happen during this playthrough so um i, I don't think it's like too crazy to bring stuff up. Okay. But I mean, in essence, the 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 way that um, the reason that the blood has power is because there is a kind of like uh, magical kind of like beyond human dimension to the blood itself. Uh, specifically, um, the the sort of beings that inspired the the church's religious doctrine, um, like the consumption of their blood, gives you like amazing abilities and powers. Um, so that is is kind of how how the church got started, and anyone who consumes that blood their blood in turn as i understand it becomes like a a diluted but still like useful tool in a in a similar sense um okay let's see if we can get this cool thick cold blood and what Okay, so I don't think there's anywhere I can go without taking fall damage. But it might be less fall damage if I fall over here. Oh, okay, not bad. Didn't rally much, but not, not too bad either. Is there any other guys over here? Hello? rallies me back most of the way. Okay. 
so you by by consuming the the blood of these like higher beings oh nice new armor hunter hat hunter garb hunter gloves hunter trousers okay and i think not 100 percent sure but i think that is just a straight upgrade to what we have so we're we'll, we'll swap that out i think we're safe to do that uh and we already read the lore for this because this is what the the little dudes are selling in the dream oh and then look at that oh look we, look at us we look so cool we're, we're like the guy on the cover to the video game Bloodborne. Um, I thought that was another dead horse. That's a big rat. So the idea is like, you, you, like by consuming the blood of these gods, you're you're kind of like uh, preempting some kind of like. You're forcing, like, a mental ascension or something, or, like, a spiritual ascension that you might not actually be ready for. And, like, if you're sort of overwhelmed by that process, if you can't actually handle it, you, you end up becoming bestial. Uh... Oh. Oh. You end up becoming bestial. Um, because it's kind of like you, you, because you can't handle what you're, you're going through, you, you end up kind of like reverting to your worst instincts or something. It's kind of like, um, you're so overwhelmed by all this like new input or something that you're getting from, uh, this, this sort of impossible new understanding of the universe that, uh, That you, you you just like become this beast like informed by like hunger and greed and anger. So like the dudes in the street who are running the hunt, although they are like pursuing the beasts because they are actually like perhaps like sincerely motivated by the desire to like solve this problem, they're also like so motivated by their anger that they're they're becoming bestial. Uh, because they too, as as citizens of Yarnum, have been like consuming the blood. And, uh, yeah, pe people who are sufficiently... Oh! Dang. Nice hit, dude. Um, people who have consumed the largest amount of blood and the purest quantities of blood and are may have maybe, like, resisted beasthood longest uh, would be people of the church, at least potentially, because they're, like, maybe the ones who are, like, most clear-headed or, or most prepared to attempt to resist this scourge. Um, hmm. But uh, that also results that like when they do finally turn, they're also the ones who are, are most dangerous because they've uh, as I said, c consumed the most of this stuff in, in the worst way. And uh, that also includes the hunters, like people who are like really good, really talented hunters, not just like the roving mobs, but like like the people who are like really skilled professional hunters uh, are also highly dangerous as a result of, of, of what they've sort of accumulated over time. Like essentially what our character is doing, like the fact that we're getting these blood echoes as a result of... Um, you know, fighting all these enemies, and we're like constantly reinjecting ourselves with additional blood. Um, this guy just dying to rats. Probably. I don't see another route down here, so I don't know if there's actually anywhere to go. Am I, am I wrong? Note. Treasure waits ahead, yeah. Or do I drop here? I guess I could drop here. Is there a way to do it safely is the the problem. I think there has to be. Uh, yes. Is there anything on these ledges I'd rather not miss on our way down? It. 
Okay, those guys have more health than I thought. So yeah, that actually, um... Oh, there's poison type enemies too, it looks like. Um... Bold Hunter's Mark, that's something we haven't found yet. Oh, more guys. Oh, he's still alive after a four-hit combo. I wonder if he's spawned infinitely. I would hope not. Do we get more souls? Okay. Not souls, but what I face. Okay, I don't think they spawn instantly. Uh, illusory wall? Hidden pathways ahead. Not that I see. I think they're trying to trick me. Um, the, the whole consumption of blood leading to mutation is also why you end up with these, like, horribly mutated, um, uh, scavenger creatures. So like the crows and the uh, the rats are all like mutated and stuff because they're, you know, s somebody like a beast or whatever gets thrown into the sewer after it dies. And as a result of that, uh, the animals like the, the crows and the uh, the rats are eating its, its, its dead body um, and consuming more of this bestial blood so that like even the animals are, are getting transformed as a result. Which is uh, not not great. I mean, it also like contributes to the spread of disease. I mean, it's not dissimilar from like the game Dishonored also talked about this a little bit. Oh, that's a long ladder. Uh, I don't know if I want to go up there yet. Um, what directions? So I go that way. I can go both ways. Let's let's try this for a moment before we take the, the long ladder. I don't get ambushed. Either from above or from the side. Nothing in here. No illusory wall. Illusory wall. Can't tell if I hear something else moving in the water. Which isn't pleasant. Or if I'm like hearing myself. Something died. Something fell. Probably. Maybe something jumped down here trying to kill me. And as a result ended up dying from the fall damage. Okay, we can we can take this area little by little. Nothing I can, can't go through there. You are coming my way. Oh no, you're you're turning. What about in here? Okay, so that's a whole thing. Nothing. Those guys have guns. Let's get out of their line of sight. Ow. You also have a gun. Thank you for the bullets. But yeah, the game Dishonored did a similar thing with the um, with the uh, the animals, which I think is kind of cool. Where it's just like in infection is uh, well built into the game or something. Okay, getting that timing down a little bit better. I'm not like a pro gamer over here, but. I'm starting to understand it. Okay, I see items over there and guys over there. 
Oh, and I did aggro one down the stairs. I thought I heard footsteps. A little bit risky on my part, but worth it. Oh, blood vials too, that's great. But uh, yeah, w w I know that there's a, uh, later in the game, there's also, I mean, in fact, not far from here, I think there's at least one uh, like mutated pig also. And I know later in the game, there's, there's a bunch of them. Um, but yes, similar vibe where it's like pigs will eat anything. They're, they're omnivores. Um, get over here. Okay, so there's a, a middle level I need to get down to at some point as well to check for items. I just wondering, there's another guy over here that I maybe missed. Is he hiding? Huh, okay, I thought there was another dude. Never mind, that's why I, I threw the pebble and was trying to be so careful. Um, there is a middle tier though. Are there any items in these alcoves? Not one there. Not one there, not one there. Let's see around the ways. We also gotta check those stairs, and then there's the other side. There's a lot of directions for us to go in, everybody. Nothing in there. I don't think. Nothing in there, I don't think. Nothing in there, I don't think. Anything on the beams? I think I saw the glow of an item at some point, but down there by the rats. Okay, so we will have to descend at some point, but let's let's see what's up these stairs. If there's like a door for me to unlock or something that could be like useful potentially. This seems like the kind of place where they would hide a door for me to unlock. Oh, no, there's an open door though. then a walkway for me to drop down onto. Let's see where this is, out of curiosity. Somewhere I don't think I want to be, but there is a door with a red thing, so. I don't have anywhere to tell you. Okay. Hmm. Yep. So uh, for a minute, I was wondering if her her dialogue referring to me as a hunter was like somehow the result of me wearing the hunter's garb now, and if like she maybe didn't even recognize me as an outsider because I've changed clothing. But no, she she clearly knows I'm an outsider. Cool. 
blood do which i think are i think that's upgrade material um or like those are our hard souls so to speak like i can convert that into uh into experience points to level up with Look interactable. Nope. Well. So many directions. Oh, you're still alive. Uh. So many directions to go in, everybody. Like, it's hard to keep up. Is that open? No. Anything this way? Is this a place we've been? Oh! We could have gone this way the whole time, and I never even noticed. So we maybe took this from, maybe we took that whole thing from a really weird direction. Uh, that's cool though. Um, that kind of goes back to that one bell, which I'm tempted to do. Like I wouldn't mind going back and, and upgrading. Um, but there's a part of me that thinks it's worth maybe staying until I find one more of the... Um, What's it called? The the thing for upgrading my weapon. Because I think we're, we're, we are just the one away. Cold blood do. Is there anything else up here? Not that I see. That side? Also not that I see, but oh, over there, yes. And you... That dropped an item for me to go get. You. Okay. Oof, got very close to that edge there. Is there anything up here for me? <laughs> Remember, friend. Oh, Eileen the Crow. I know you, you're an NPC. Hello. Oh. A hunter, are you? And an outsider? What a mess you've been caught up in. And tonight of all nights. Here. To welcome the new hunter. A bold hunt four bold hunters marks. I believe that's the escape item. Prepare yourself for the worst. There are no humans left. They're all flesh-hungry beasts now. Still lingering about. What's wrong? A hunter unnerved by a few beasts. <laughs> no matter. Without fear in our hearts. A little different from the beasts themselves. Shake off cape as a gesture. Can I do gestures from this menu? I don't think I can. I think that gestures might be locked to... Oh, what am I doing? Gestures might be locked until I get a PlayStation controller. Or like it might not be something I'm, I'm capable of doing. I'm not positive. Um, but oh, that's great. She, she is uh, another character who I think is mostly a good person. Like, I think she's another one who's like more on the good side, which is, is not super easy to come by in this game. Uh, most people are, are bad. So that, that's nice. But, uh, okay, so we dropped two weapons, I see, or uh, two things. One is there, one is 
there, so we do have to drop down to the middle level to get those now. Um, how do we do that safely? This seems safe. Hopefully. Uh, not too bad. Okay. Now... Come on. Okay. Okay. Throwing knife. Excellent. I don't know. Oh, saw spear. New weapon. Nice. Cool. I don't think I can get across there unless I uh, climb back up. So we have to, we sort of have to exit and then find our way back. That's okay. Madman's knowledge. There we go. Oh, hello. Madman's knowledge is a kind of important item. Um, throwing knife. We should read. Actually, let's wait till we get back to Hunter's Dream before we read any lore stuff. Because I'm I feel a little exposed here. Okay, well, we're gonna find the ladder up. Climb back up there. That. And I can actually sprint up the ladder, kind of. Oh! Run, 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 run. I forgot there were guys over there with the guns. I hit the wrong button. It's okay, though. I lived. Bloodstone shards. Excellent. Okay, we have the stuff to upgrade. And I think we have at least two levels of souls, so, um... I don't want to get too risky, but I also... I don't know. I don't know if I really want to, like... I don't want to sprint out of here, but I also think, like... I don't want to push my luck. I don't want to, like, lose two levels of upgrade materials. Gotta check my corners better. Cold blood do. Okay, so over on that one side there was that super tall ladder and I kinda wanna check that out before we go back. I can't go around this way. Can go around the other way. Oh, hello. More bullets, excellent. I think we're doing, oh man, and there's a thing to drop to there. I feel like the stuff that's gonna be on those will at least be, like, worth the effort. I would hope so, at least. So I want to... It's kind of dead. I might be wrong, but... I feel like... Bloodstone shard. I would say that was worth it. Um, where from here? Is this where the tall ladder was? Yes. 
And let's see what's at the top of the tall ladder, and hopefully it's not going to kill me. I mean, probably it will, because that's what this game is. But I don't think there's actually anything else for me to explore up there. Unless that's a door? No. Uh, no. Okay, I think this is the right next thing for me to look at. Okay, big guy. Concerning, but I've, I've dealt with them before. Item. Okay. Madman's knowledge, again. Lovely. Okay. Let's hope we don't die to this big guy and ruin what was a uh, what's been a very productive kind of forward motion can i get a visceral on him yes well i didn't visceral him but i mean i did the the thing blood vials lovely oh okay that's a person that's not a person that was a specter and another ladder. You are glowing. What does that mean? Wretched outsider. Trying to fool me to open this door. I wouldn't say that. Heaven's the depths of depravity. Hmm. Okay, I don't think there's anything else to do on this level, so up the next ladder and once again. Let's hope there's nothing gonna kill me. Let's see if we can actually add the... Let's add that to my quick bar, just in case. And hope I don't die up here. Oh. Oh, okay, this is actually perfect. This is a great way to round things out. Hello. She went to find him, but now she's gone too. I'm all alone and scared. Really? Oh, thank you. My mum wears a red jeweled brooch. It's so big and, and beautiful. You won't miss it. Oh, I mustn't forget. If you find my mum, give her this music box. Tiny music box. It plays one of Daddy's favorite songs. And when Daddy forgets us, we play it for him so he remembers. without it. What am, what noises am I hearing? Scary stuff. My mum wears a red yep. so big and beautiful. Oh, yep. and if you think. Yep. Okay, open gate. Closed by, oh yeah, the Operate device. So I think this is opening a shortcut back somewhere semi-familiar. Let's see what we what we find when we get through here. It opens a shortcut, certainly. Uh, there's a bunch of guys up there. over here. Pebble. This, okay, I know where we're at. We're not super close to a lantern, but we can get to one. Let's start by taking out the big guy, then we can, we can round around on those, because I feel a little bit more confident in big guys now. Oh, no. Not so confident that I'm feeling good, but... Not too bad. Oh, blood vials. Okay, we are officially now... Oh, nice. And a torch. Cool. 
we are officially now um, stocking extra blood vials, which means that like if I use some up when I respawn, I'll go back up to 20. Um, so long as I have enough in my stores to, to replenish. Let's see. Item over there. That we saw. We saw this on the other side of the gate. Episode 2. Cool. Good to have that checked off. Okay, and let's try not to die to a mob. I was hoping that would kill multiple people. That was not well placed. Weak enemies, because they're technically like starting area enemies. Six blood vials, dang. Okay. This was very much worth it. More quicksilver bullets, also worth it. Um, I think we're in actually a pretty good spot. Because I think these stairs go back up to that clinic. Or back up to the bridge. Yeah, back up to the bridge. Um, and I can get to... I didn't find another lantern, unfortunately, but I can, um... The one at the end of the bridge will do us fine. Go back to the Hunter's Dream, read some lore, and it will reset all the enemies, unfortunately. That's the rhythm of these games. But, um... You know, I think we made some good progress today. We opened a door... We have more places to explore next time down uh, back by the sewer. Uh, and I'm feeling a little more confident around most of the enemies, so... I think we're in a good spot, everybody. We get to upgrade our weapon. We can upgrade our ourselves. Hopefully maybe one vitality, one... Let's start with upgrading our wep weapon. Make sure I don't want to... I don't want to run out of stuff... Shop. Fortify weapon. Saw cleaver to plus two. So that's another 10% damage um, on, uh, on main fizz plus another 20% gain on scaling. Not bad. Um, nothing has yet changed on the, uh, the actual attribute bonuses, but that's not bad. Uh, and then we also got, we picked up a new weapon, the saw spear. Which is uh, weaker, but um, well, we could try it out in the garden. Do we have enough? Okay, we don't have enough to upgrade our pistol, but we're, we're just one bloodstone shard away from being able to upgrade the pistol, or six away from getting this to plus three, which uh, could be could be a nice thing to have, but uh, not a bad start. We're still at four insights, so that hasn't changed since we last uh, met with our, our dudes. Uh, let's start by leveling up. Welcome home, good hunter. What is it you desire? Very well. Let the echoes become your strength. Let me stand close. So yeah, we just have enough for two levels, so let's do uh, one to Vitality, which just, it's not a huge gain on Vite, but it does raise physical defense, so that's not bad. Endurance increases, I think everything actually upgrades my physical defense, so that's not bad across the board. Um, this does nothing for me, this does nothing for me other than gun. Okay, so I, I definitely shouldn't be doing skill, blood, tinger, arcane. Uh, yeah, let's just do Vitality and Strength um, for now, and, and maybe next time we'll do 
Next time we have like enough for three, we'll uh, we'll do vitality, endurance, strength, and we'll keep pumping all those until we get them to those numbers I said last episode. Okay, that's that's not a bad start. Um, we're now level eighteen. Oh yeah, well, we heard that. Uh, and now let's check out some lore, shall we? We've uh, I've divulged a uh, pretty major plot point, so let's see if anything else we've picked up uh, speaks to the lore I've been been discussing. Uh, throwing knife, finely serrated throwing knife, throwing knife with a finely serrated blade, one of the old hunter Henrik's favorite weapons. Does not cause a great deal of damage to beasts, but with deft use can distract attackers and keep them at bay. Bold hunter's mark. Dangling upside down, rune etched in the mind of a hunter, the image upon this parchment, parchment allows one to envision the rune with clarity. Allows a hunter to awaken again without losing blood echo is a trick that seems nearly too good to be true. So that's a pretty good resource. It lets us like come back here without losing anything. So if we're ever in a really dire situation, that's pretty great to have. Tiny music box. A small music box received from a young Yarnum girl plays a song shared by her mother and father. Inside the lid is a small scrap of paper, perhaps an old message. Two names can be made out, however faintly. Viola and Gascoigne. Cold blood do. I think... Yeah, we already have that thick cold blood. So we're, we're, we have increasingly powerful uh, souls we can consume not souls but blood echoes souls in dark souls madman's knowledge skull of a madman touched by the wisdom of the great ones used to gain insight making contact with eldritch wisdom is a blessing for even if it drives one mad it allows one to serve a grander purpose for posterity so um yeah the great ones i think that's this is the first time we've heard their name invoked but the uh the gods of the church the great ones and uh i, I guess i won't spoil the next bit but there, there's something more going on there Let, let's save that for later uh anything new here new weapon the saw spear one of the trick weapons of the workshop commonly used by those who dedicate themselves to the hunt this saw, effective at damaging, drawing the blood of beasts, transformed into a medium-ranged spear. The saw, with its set of bloodletting teeth, has become a symbol of the hunt and grows only in effectiveness the more grotesquely transformed the beast. We also got a torch, which is apparently an offhand weapon that can replace our gun. Common torch formed by wrapping a pine resin drenched cloth around the end of a long stick. Hunters choose torches, not only because the hunt leads them into the darkest nooks, but also because certain creatures they encounter are possessed of a deathly fear of flame. Hunter hat, I think we read all that already. Okay, I think we're, we're all caught up on items then, everybody. Uh, let's take a look at the saw spear just for the fun of it. Um, how do I switch weapons is the, the question. Uh, left. There we go. So we now have a saw spear in hand. We can see it's pointy. Similar combo is our main weapon. Similar thing there. But spear. And it pokey. poke yeah um okay so that is the saw spear i probably won't be using it but um that's okay it's good to have uh there's some other weapons i'm kind of more intrigued by the kirk hammer that we saw before is one of them uh, it seems like that could be really fun. There's some really weird and wild weapons in this game that I'm excited to try to play with at some point. We'll just double check if there's anything else new here. I don't think there will be. Because uh, as said, I think it's all... Yeah. 
I think it's I think it's tied to your insight, so uh, there wouldn't be anything new. So, all right, everybody, we made so much progress today. We uh, we didn't even die, which is uh, perhaps because I was moving quite slowly through the areas. But I think I made some good choices. Uh, I, I you know I'm getting the parry timing down. I'm uh, feeling a little bit more confident, and we're definitely dealing a lot more damage now that we've upgraded our weapon twice and uh, upgraded ourselves now. We're, we're a much more formidable enemy against these early game enemies, which is uh, important. Important just so we can keep running through these areas, which will be... Uh, Yarnum is, as I understand it, having again, having not necessarily played this before, but having seen other people play it, Yarnum is kind of a hub, like... No matter how deep we get into the game, we're going to keep passing through Yarnum, um, even as we we like branch out into different related areas. So uh, this is this is important that we can fight these guys and and feel confident in doing so. So thanks so much for watching, everybody. I, I hope you've had a good time. And uh, next time we. Maybe we'll be going against Father Gascoin, who uh, we've had his, his name teased by that music box. Um, I think he is the next boss, but I, I'm not 100% positive. I'm not sure how long it'll take to get to him. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, if, if the title of the next episode is Gascoin, um, you've already had that spoiled for you. So uh, thank you so much for watching, everyone. We'll, we'll see you next episode.